God richly bless you. I thank God for the life of each and every student who are here listening to us from El Dorado Hill. I am Bishop Frank Abidi Boatin. I'm the cohort advice, the uh, regional director in Sahara, Sahara, Africa. In Ghana, I'm also the resident bishop of International Charismatic Church. Of course, a member of the SUM faculty. I'm here to share with you a very, very important subject, and it's a subject of faith. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 5, 15, verse 21. It's a very popular, you know, pericope in the Bible that I believe a lot of you students can identify with if you are a real Bible student. When you read from the verse 21 of Matthew chapter 15, he said, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Cana came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is an amazing story that describes what I know to be great faith. There are all forms of faith. We have little faith. We have great faith. We have strong faith. You know, when we talk about little faith, you can easily relate to when the, people, the disciples were constrained into a ship and they were going, crossing the river, the sea. The Bible says that their life was in jeopardy because the sea rose up against them. While Jesus Christ was asleep in the hinder part of the boat, the Bible said that the disciples were really struggling to survive. And then they remembered and went to Jesus and slapped Jesus. That Jesus, don't you see that we are perishing? Then the Bible said that Jesus Christ stood up and commanded, peace be still. And then he turned to them, oh, you of little faith. Of course, you can be excused for little faith. But you need to understand that little faith can only do little things. And you can also solve the issue of little faith. Because it's a little faith because you don't have a lot of information. The disciples have not come to a point to know Jesus Christ in that dimension where the elements of the whole world have to be subject to him for Jesus to command them to be quiet. They didn't know Jesus Christ. So they can be excused of little faith. As a child of God, you, if you have little faith, it means you need more information. You need to study God's word. You need to attend church and listen to men of God so that your faith can grow up. Then we have great faith. We have strong faith like the Bible talk about Abraham. The Bible says that he was not weak in faith to doubt the word of God. Although he was about 100 years, he did not consider his body that was already dead and that of Sarah that was also dead. And against hope, the Bible said that they believe in hope and work strong and be not weak in faith. I want to tell you that weak faith is something that is not recommended at all. When we say somebody have weak faith, it means that he is not 
exercising, you know, and obeying the word of God. It is like somebody who have eaten a lot of food and you look at him very big, yet the person doesn't have strength. Why? You need to exercise to convert all those food that you have taken it into muscle so that you can gain strength. So it is with the child of God. You might be studying the word, you might be reading, you might be attending and hearing great men of God, but until you apply yourself to the word of God, your faith will remain weak. And I think that it will not be good when you are described as weak faith. So for you to have strong faith, for you to have great faith, that is what exactly I'm going to just help us to just identify the steps that this woman took. For the woman to come to a point where Jesus looked at him and said that great is your faith, woman. You know for sure that this is a Canaanite woman and it's a typical gentle woman who was not marked for blessing, who demonstrated this great faith. She appeared to be a single mother who belonged to the class of the poor and the destitute because the Bible does not talk about her husband. But here comes the woman when she heard that Jesus was in town. To begin the faith journey, you need to hear about Jesus Christ. You need to hear his word. For the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. And if you are able to lay hold on the prom promises of God, that is when you will start the journey of faith. That is so significant because the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the essence of Christian life is to live your life to be able to please God. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews that without faith, it is impossible, not even difficult. It is impossible to please God. So for you to please God and to receive breakthroughs in life, you need to know how to apply yourself to the principle of faith. To begin with, you need the promise of God. You need to hear Jesus. You need to hear Jesus speak to you. So when the woman heard about Jesus, the Bible said that he cried unto God. And that is the next thing. And that also defined the prayer life of the child of God. Not ordinary prayer life. I'm talking about great faith. Like Jesus Christ looked at the woman and said that great is your faith. How do we process great faith in our life? The Bible said that when he heard the word of God, the scripture says that with the word, hearing about Jesus, he cried out unto God. When I say cry, and I describe that cry as prayer, it is not just ordinary prayer that he prayed. He really prayed her heart out. She was desperate. You can see from this way that we are talking about a desperado. Somebody who has come to the crossroad of his life, his her back is against the wall. He really didn't know where to turn. And he knew very well that this is the last chance. This is the last bus. This is the last train. This is the last flight. And he, she will not stand for it to go without jumping into it. Bible said that he cried and said, have mercy. Great faith look beyond the, pe the person. It looks beyond what you are, what you have been able to do, what your status is, and go beyond you into the mercy of God. So when he cried out unto Jesus, that Jesus have mercy on me. The woman was saying, look beyond my sin. Look beyond my class as a Gentile and then show mercy unto me. That is what mercy is about. Withholding what you deserve. And what you deserve is punishment. What you deserve is suffering. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Everybody can cry for the mercy of God. So the woman in his desperation cried unto God that God have mercy upon me. 
You know, there is interesting about this woman, and that is her ability to diagnose the problem before her. It was about her doctor. And the Bible said that he realized that there was something wrong with my daughter. That I believe that medical, medical science cannot explain, cannot help. It goes beyond the comprehension of medic, medicine. He realized that no, this thing is a vexation from the demons. My daughter is vexed with demons and there's no way I can have any solution without you, Jesus. Why? Because you have heard that Jesus cast out demons and heal all forms of sickness and even raise the dead. So she knew very well that Jesus Christ can help her. However, as much as this woman cried, Jesus did not mind her. So there is always a moment of silence. And that is very peculiar about this woman's situation. She was shedding tears and crying for help. And she knew that it is only Jesus who can help her. However, Bible said that Jesus Christ didn't answer him with a word. And you know what, what, what one word can do to you when it is coming from Jesus. And the woman was waiting for that word and that word never came. And so, are you going to give up? So there was a moment where the woman have to really wait and to worsen his moment of silence and, you know, his agony, the Bible said that the disciples were also uh, uh, annoyed with a woman's cry and also told Jesus Christ that Jesus, let this woman go away for she is disturbing us. How do you see it? You know, I'm here very desperate looking for solution and I've identified a person who can help me. And then somebody, the ushers, the other leaders came to Jesus and said, I know, Jesus, we are tired and that you need to drive this woman away. I know you might be giving up, especially a child of God, when you suffer rejection, when you become discouraged, when you are waiting for something and it is not coming, when there is a moment of delay, you have to know how to behave yourself. In fact, delay is a reality in life because we look at the chronos time, whereas God always has another time called Kairos, a moment in the chronos where God will come to you. For the Bible says that he has made all things beautiful in his own time. And when the timing of God arrives, nothing can stop God from coming to you to help you. So when your prayer answer, answer is being delayed, just exercise patience. Just stay cool. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. For definitely God will come to your aid and answer your prayer. The Bible says that. Wow, the, Jesus Christ was trying to respond to the disciples. He said that, you know, I am not, I'm only sent to the lost tribe of Israel. And so this woman do not deserve. That means that what the woman is requesting, Jesus Christ said, I know you do not qualify. You do not deserve it. And it appears as if... He, he was endorsing the stand of the disciples to drive her away. But look here, the woman was not prepared to, say, to have a no for an answer. So without, you know, being invited, while Jesus engaged the disciple, the woman threw herself at the feet of Jesus Christ and worshipped him. You know what? There is something that God cannot resist. There is something that will always attract the attention of God to you. There is always something that can bring the focus of God upon your life. And that is your worship. 
In fact, it's the only thing God cannot do for himself. It's the only thing that can come from the subject, that can come from us as children of God. When we lift our hands and we begin to worship God, God's attention comes upon us. For the Bible says that, in fact, he will not resist when you are worshiping him. For the Bible says that God dwells in Judah. God reigns in Judah. And when we say Judah, we are talking about praise and worship. So that any time you have made a request from God and appear as if it is being delayed, of course, in life, hope, hope that is delayed, make the heart sick. Hope that is deferred, make the heart sick. And this is where I've come to encourage you that you need to be careful that when you have prayed and it appears as if it is taking long, don't give up, don't misbehave, don't throw in the towel, just pick a song. If you don't have a song, slot in a, 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 a pen drive and begin to listen to song and begin to rejoice, just to fine tune your heart so that you do not grow bitter, so that rejection does not set in your heart, so that you do not become discouraged, so that you do not lose your enthusiasm as a child of God, so that you don't stop doing what you know to do as a child of God. Maybe you are an usher, maybe you belong to a department, maybe you belong to the evangelism team. You don't stop what you are doing because you have not heard from God. God has not answered your prayer. No, you keep on worshiping. And the Bible says that the woman worshiped God. Then Jesus Christ repeated her disqualification again and said, I cannot throw the children's bread. To the dogs, that is amazing. That is to add to the fact that the woman do not deserve. The woman still did not give up. He just cried and said, help me. Then when he heard that Jesus Christ was talking about the bread of children that should not be thrown to the dog, the woman talked back. Always great faith. Always speak back to the circumstance. When the circumstance or the situation is threatening you and still discouraging you, when the situation stands before you as a mountain that appears to be impossible to cross over, no, resist that. Just talk back to the mountain. Just say that I can overcome. Just say that I can be able to break through. Just say that I know my Redeemer liveth. I still maintain the fact that by his strife I am healed. You still maintain the fact that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Maybe you might be going through pains in your body. It doesn't matter. For the Bible says that. Cast not away your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. There is always something that you need to understand as far as the promise of God is concerned. For the Bible says that the people of old, those that are lined up in Hebrew chapter 11, the Bible says that they receive the promise through faith and patience. There is an element of patience when your situation, when your breakthrough is being delayed. Don't throw in the towel. Exercise patience. Sing song. Don't give up on God, for God will come through for you as a child of God. So the Bible said that the woman spoke back that, yes, I'm not here to sit at the same table with the children. However, I know something. I know also what dogs like and what dogs lift their eyes for. It is not for what is offered to the children, but they look for the crumbs that fall at, under the table. And you know, if you have read a pet before, I have one dog also, and I know how they behave when you are eating 
And although they desire some of the food, they will not just jump and begin to eat from your plate. They will just cross their leg and sit down and they will be looking at you. When you lift up a spoonful of the food and you are just lifting to your mouth, they will just lift up their eyes and come down. When you put the spoon in the bowl, they will just be looking at you. When you lift it up, they will just be looking at you. All that they are waiting for, for is a drop of the food on the ground. For they know when the food falls down, the crumbs come down, then it is their bona fide property. As for that, they need, and that is exactly what the woman was looking for. Because he knows that it won't take much for his, her problem to be solved. Even the crumbs that fall be, be, uh, uh, under the table is enough for me to enjoy and to have my breakthrough. So, child of God, do not give up when God appears to be silent on your issue. Ignore them. When they can identify with your frustration, for not all people can identify with your frustration. When it comes to relationship with God, there is a principle, not a principle of individuality. Each man for himself, but God for us all. God knows you better than they know you. God knows your frustration. God knows your issue better than them. And he has the ultimate answer to your issue that you are confronted with. So when others can identify with your frustration, ignore them. Not only that, I want to assure you, I can identify with what you are going through. Just like I said, hope defer make the heart sick. Your heart is your altar of worship. Get a song, worship, and you can attract God's attention. When your situation is being delayed, my students, I want to assure you, don't throw in the towel. For why? Because God is a prayer answering God. And so sometimes when God is silent, it is only because God is working and trying to just fulfill a particular will in your life. You know, trials that linger on, comes the Bible say that to try our faith, your faith must grow from weak, from little. Your faith must grow up to become great or strong faith. That is sometimes the reason why certain things come our way and it appears as if there is no breakthrough. But I know for sure that in life, every child of God has to survive every situation that God allows in his way. But thankfully, the Bible says that God will not allow temptation or trial. That is difficult. That is much more heavier to come to you. Like I always say, if you are not Daniel, it means God will not allow lion to cross your path. If you are not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God will not allow you to go through fire. If God allow you to go through fire, then he knows that you can believe him that he will enter into the fire to yank you out of the fire. Otherwise, God will not allow you. When God allow you to enter into any difficult situation, Bible say that there is always a way of escape. For the Bible say that God is faithful who are not allow you to be tempted beyond your strength. So we are building on to discover what great faith is. The woman kept on worshiping, knowing that no, he cannot afford to give up on God because he didn't have any alternative. Sometimes when you have any alternative, that is when you give up easily and throw in the towel. If you have any alternative, just go for it. But if your situation defy all other things and it is only God that can help you, then stay on, develop that muscles, be strong, have that staying power. Don't let your limbs to be weakened. Worship God. I've come to tell you, your family issue shall be resolved. Your health issue shall be resolved. Your healing is coming. 
the answer to your prayer is come. Just a little while. Stay on. Don't give up on God. For God so loved you that he gave Jesus Christ. And whatsoever the Bible says, we ask in the name of Jesus. God will answer. It is time for you to receive answer to your prayer. He turned to the woman and said, Great is your faith, woman. Let it be done according to your faith. May it be done according to your faith in Jesus' mighty name. God richly bless you.